When you're ready to put down roots, where could be better than being amongst family and friends in the heart of beautiful countryside? Nature lovers Martin and Rebecca are about to do just that. They've spent the last few years traveling up and down the country working as relief pub managers. It's meant grueling 18 hour days and living out of suitcases. Now they want to settle down in the Nottinghamshire village where they both grew up. But with barely a penny between them, their dreams lie in an old, dilapidated church. They plan to turn into a home. It's not going to be easy. We have put all our eggs in one basket. If this goes wrong, then we are destroyed, basically. It will take more than a miracle for them to achieve the simple life. Martin and Rebecca are coming home to the comforts of friends and family after years of wandering the country. But in order to settle down, they're facing one heck of an adventure. With little money or experience, they're taking on an ambitious project. A three-bedroom house around here costs over £100,000. But Martin and Rebecca have only got £80,000, and that's taken them to the very limit of their borrowing. What they could afford is this disused 1970s church. And after gutting it, they're now starting to convert it into a home. And a dream home at that. God, you've been busy, haven't you? Look at that. Mm -hmm. There's a start. So this is the Pentecostal church. Completely or cross. Come on, show me inside. Yeah. So what made you go for this? We could afford it. We couldn't afford anything else in the village. Yeah. And we don't want to leave the village, so we decided to do this. Then how much did you pay for this place? Um, 46,000. 46, 46, the houses across the road are like, like £110,000. Yeah. And so. we get what we want rather than what someone else That's has right. designed, so... Martin and Rebecca's plans for their first home together are ambitious. They want to transform most of the ground floor of the church into one large L-shaped living space with an open plan dining area at one end and a separate kitchen with the utility room to one side. They're creating a whole new first floor which will have a large landing where Rebecca can pursue her love of painting. There's also a family bathroom two guest bedrooms, and a vast master bedroom and ensuite. And they plan to do all this on a tiny budget. So you're going to finish this project with £35,000? He reckons so. so I'm just so. agreeing. I know so. Good, I'm not sure. But... I've costed it all and we're going we're gonna to be all right. You seem a bit worried about that, Rebecca. I am a bit worried, but then again, <laughs> I trust him, basically. If he says we're going to do it, we'll do yeah. it. He knows what he's doing. I hope. On a build like this, £35,000 could go on materials alone. But they have to build a whole new floor, put on a new roof, put up new internal partition walls, and install a kitchen, three bathrooms, and new windows throughout. And on top of their shoestring budget, Martin's given them an incredibly tight deadline. He wants to be in by Christmas. Now we're in August now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I look around here and Christmas is only five months away. Look at it. It's romping ahead. Well, there's probably less here than there was before. <laughs> there's I'm a not lot sure less. about romping ahead. <laughs> With no experience, ex-publican Martin is project managing this ambitious conversion himself and relying on his trusty, unpaid crew. Crunch, tree doctor and bodybuilder. Moving heavy stuff around's my speciality. <laughs> Colin, future father-in-law. I come down here for an hour to help him when he first started. I've been here ever since. 
and anyone else he can rope in to help. Being able to call on, on such a vast amount of people is great. And the, is that favours or is that paid work? You know, I get my point in when I see him such so like. I look at this now and I'm thinking, here's a guy who he's got a couple of mates who might help him out with a bit of labouring. Yeah. And you reckon you're going to be in that sitting room on your sofa by Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Just this one will do. This is much more than a building project. It's the start of a whole new life for Martin and Rebecca. One where they can spend more time together, pursuing some of their passions, like walking, nature and motorbikes. Weekends away on the bike, yeah. Go up the forest in summer evenings. I can also start doing me hobbies again, like music, me painting. painting. Yeah. But what about your future together? Well, think... Marriage, hopefully. If I can get him down the aisle. <laughs> He's asked, but that's about it. I don't remember that, do you? Yeah, I do. Mm. It's August and Martin faces his first major building challenge, with only free, unskilled labour to help. They need to put in three heavy steel girders to support the new first floor. In an attempt to save the cost of a crane, Martin is hoping to lift them in by hand. So he's trying out a pulley system he's devised, out of scaffold poles. I think normally you'd have a crane to lift them in, aren't you? Budget, budget, no crane. Ready? Right, take the clutch square up there. I don't reckon it'll work, I don't. Yeah. Well, should it? Of course it'll work. So it's taken them about an hour just to put that right. tiny bit of scaffolding up over there. And if Martin thinks he's going to get this finished by Christmas, he's got no chance. <laughs> It's August, and Martin and Rebecca have started work on their ambitious church conversion in the heart of Robin Hood country. Their dream is to settle down together after years of living out of suitcases, and they're hoping to do this by Christmas. Yeah, I'm about a week out of schedule, so I'm, I'm not in a panic at the moment with anything. With a tiny budget of just £35,000 and a large building project ahead, they have to save all the money they can, so they're counting on a lot of help from friends and family. Three metres and four centimetres. Yep. One major sacrifice is that they'll be living apart until their home is finished. Rebecca's staying with her parents because they can only afford a single birth caravan with barely room for Martin. It's like living in a shoebox. It's really cold in the winter and too hot in the summer. 44 centimetres. After living together day in, day out, this is a big change for the couple. It's horrible. I don't like it at all. Um, you go to this lonely bedroom at the end of the night and you're thinking there should be, should be him there. Because you were seeing him sort of 24-7, weren't you? I was working, living together. I'd rather have him to good luck to, but I've got a teddy bear instead. <laughs> While the new house is being built, Rebecca will be the only one bringing in any income. She swapped life as a pub manager for a new job selling tiles for kitchens and bathrooms. So even before getting her first home, she can already indulge her love of interior design. I enjoy it. It's me. I've, I've always been creative and I enjoy designing and what have you, so it just gives me a chance to do what I enjoy. Martin's working as project manager on their new conversion. He now faces a tough job, lifting five tons of steel to support the new first floor. After trying to do it without the professionals, he finally decides that the task is too daunting and shells out for a crane. I'll be, I'll be really happy when these steels are in because 
that I was worried about it starting. Really worried about it. Putting in steels is a critical and challenging stage in any build. Much more so for inexperienced Martin and his crew of unskilled mates. This one's got to go tight up to that wall. Yeah? Each more. Whoa! Over there. Down. Yeah? Each more. Everything's going to plan. Up to yet. That'll do for Jibin. Stop. 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 Super duper! Yeah, that one's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> How many moths? The knockdown price of £180 for the crane is money well spent and a lot safer. That's not like me, I only got 14 out. Now I can, uh, I can start getting the roof on and get it to watertight again, uh, which will allow me to just uh, go all the way through now. So. Fingers crossed, everything will carry on going smoothly. Before work can continue on the new first floor and roof, the building inspector has to check that the structure is strong enough to take the weight. That's put in, yeah. It's I don't think it's yeah, an original. Off the floor again, it's an original wall, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't know. The inspection doesn't end with a clear yes or no. More engineering calculations need to be done, so work has to stop on site. All Martin can do is wait. I can't carry on with the build any, any further until he's given his approval. Uh, I can carry on cleaning the site up, but that's, it's not really going forward. This leaves Martin with time on his hands. Something he never had working in the pub trade. So he decides to get a taste of his new life and takes up one of his favourite pastimes again, motorbike racing. I feel fantastic to be able to um, come out in the uh, weekends and in the week now. Where is it? When I was in the pubs, you, you couldn't move. He was stuck in the pubs all the time. Yes. <laughs> We're on a race. <laughs> Even though he has time to go out, he can't completely get away from his new day job. You can't get it out of your head. It's, it's, it's there. It's, um, it's important, isn't it? So, it's not like a normal job. You can just forget about it at weekends. It's there all the time. <laughs> At the end of the week, they get the building inspector's decision. They need to put in one more steel beam. Then they can get on with building the first floor and the new roof. But this time, Martin decides to save money and do without a crane. So he rounds up his crack team of mates to help them lift it into place. Putting in heavy steels like this is a serious job, let alone trying to do it without a crane. Yeah. The crew plan to lift half a ton of steel using only brute strength. A bit of rope. And more scary of all, not a hard hat between them. Do not try this at home. When this starts coming up here, it's going to drag it off that wall. That's what I'm worried about. It is. The steel could easily push down the wall it's resting on, to say nothing of crushing fingers or heads for that matter. Them steps aren't locked in. I know they're not. You're going to go up. No, collapse on you. Take your hand out, Crunch. I am doing it. Tell me when you're lifting. No, let's go against wall. It's all right. Let's get to the wall. It's all right. It's all. Do you want to go up there? We've got this. And give Martin yeah. a big pull. It's all up to crunch. Right. We've got it on the acro here. Have you got it on that rope? 
If this slips, it could crush someone. Can I come up? Whoa! Have you got it? I'm got it. All right, go on, mate. Go on. Go on, a bit. Two inches. An inch. An inch. Get it one crunch. Are we doing it? Yeah, go on. This is going to be fun. Go on. Ready? Yeah. Ready. Go on. Go on. Just drop it steady. Drop it? <laughs> Don't let go for God's sake. Mind that up, Chris, quick. It's not very heavy if you want to mess about a bit longer. It's only half a ton. We could do that. Fish me. I'm in. What do you mean you're in? It's all the way in. Dead easy. Amazingly, they manage. But even more amazing is the fact that Martin has friends who are willing to risk life and limb for free to help him and Rebecca build their home. Well, I want to see him do it. I want to see him make it. Because I bet there's people out there saying, no, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah, you know I mean, he's like, we'll stay by him. But you're working for nothing, aren't you? I don't mind. You're just turning up here every day, yeah. giving your time if free. I can heavy things about. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Martin's pulled together a whole host of characters on this project who have got very, very little building experience, but they're running on time. They're running on budget. I just hope they can keep this up. With all the steel beams finally in place, they can now push on with the next job. Building the first floor. Uh, he's going to do up that side and that side so, today. That looks a bit steep to me. He's going to do up them two today. Right. And them two tomorrow. Martin and his future father in law are literally learning on the job. If you don't know what you're doing, you can pick a book up and read. And that's how it's all been done. I know how that's how this that's a problem I've got. That's reading. That's why I use my glasses. Oh, right. But it seems the boys forgot to read that section on how many joists does a new floor need. All these timbers have gone in twice. Building control officer has said he didn't want two, he wanted three, so he took them all out and put the other one in. Should have all that done by now as well. If we had to do it, we'd mess up with well. this. Uh, we should be nearly done now. Martin has now only got three days to finish building the first floor before the joiners come to put up the roof. The hard work is beginning to take its toll on him. I need an enthusiasm injection today. No, I, mean, I just no, can't, get, can't no. get into it. Oh. I've worked every day from about 8 o'clock till about 8 o'clock at night. I just wanted to go home and die yesterday. Rebecca's also noticing the effect that the work is having on Martin. He's very stressed out and very tired. and It is driving him mad, slowly, and he comes home. And he just does I want. I come in from where I want to talk about it. He comes home and he doesn't want to talk about it. So we're, you know, I don't know whether to ask questions or not because he just sits there and I get one word answers. Bit of fish like that. If Martin is living and breathing the build, Rebecca's feeling more and more removed from it. Shut up the past couple of days. I mean, I go to work and I don't see it. And then I come home and there's all those bits done. I mean, I haven't seen it tonight, so I don't know what they've done. <laughs> But you feel a little bit left out of that process because he's doing the building out. work and your work. Very left out, definitely. Um, I'd like to get more involved and he won't let me. It's now mid-September. It's really important to get the building watertight before the weather turns. And to meet his Christmas deadline, Martin's got to get the roof on quickly. So he's hired two joiners to build his large traditional roof. Thank God he's called in the professionals. 
They're the only people to be paid on site so far, at a hefty £1,000 a week. The roof is costing a whopping £12,000, and after buying other materials, Martin has now spent half of his £35,000 budget. But he does have something to show for his money. How's it going? It's going uh, very well. Yeah? Hey, you're moving on, mate. Walls built up. Yeah. Joists in. Joists are in. Floor's not on properly. It's just temporary till right. the weekend. Good morning, Colin. Yeah. Yeah, you're well. Ah, oh, not bad. It's all right now. Mm, now we've got some boards down to work on. It's good to work well, actually. Well, you've got the joiners upstairs as well, doing the roof. Yeah. I mean, it seems yeah. to be moving all right. Yeah, so we can relax a bit now. Let them get on with it. So what are you two actually doing? Sky. Uh, sky. <laughs> <laughs> Having a day off. <laughs> I mean, the most important thing on any, any building project is to get the roof on, isn't it? That's right. When's it going to be done by? In three weeks' time, it'll be tiled and job done. So that's getting All towards early October, which is yeah. probably the most important time, isn't it, before the bad weather kicks in? That's right. So how much of this roof... Things are really moving along. For somebody who's gone from pulling pints to building his own house, Martin seems to be taking it all in his stride. I mean, is all this, this more difficult than you thought it would be? No, no, it's actually easier than I thought it was going to be. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm a lot more relaxed about it now I'm into it than I was when I started. Well, were you quite apprehensive at the beginning? I, I was a bit, yes. Uh, well, I didn't actually know anything about what I was going to do. So, but I've learned it all now. But you must be quite proud, though, the two of you. I mean, you haven't really done anything like this together before. No. Never Just... again. <laughs> <laughs> Despite a few setbacks, things are going surprisingly well on this build, and Martin's still confident that he can keep to his very ambitious deadline. But until he gets the roof on, he still remains vulnerable to that old English devil, the weather. Unfortunately for Martin, only four days later, the heavens open. And it starts to rain. And rain. And rain. This is the last thing Martin needs. The conditions are impossible to work in, and the build grinds to a halt. We're done. For now. He spends the next three weeks struggling to keep the site dry to prevent water damage to the inside. There's a swamp when we got here this morning. You get one day of sunshine and seven days of rain. It's been terrible. We're a week behind schedule up to now. And going backwards fast. After two years on the road working in pubs, Martin and Rebecca have returned home to the heart of friends and family to start a new life together in Nottinghamshire. It's nearly the end of October, and three weeks of solid rain have put Martin's conversion of this church weeks behind schedule. His Christmas deadline is looking less and less likely. But at long last, with the weather cleared, he gets a welcome phone call from his roofers. He's coming! <laughs> the roofer's on his way. No more sweeping puddles. So I'm going to put the felt on, which will make me watertight. My Monday, I'll be bone dry. Roof costing £12,000 and only £15,000 left to do the rest of the house, Martin is calling in all the favours he can. He even manages to get the tilers to work in their spare time. Free beer instead of wages. The community spirit on this project is unbelievable 
It's what makes Martin and Rebecca's dream possible. But it's brilliant, isn't it? I yeah, mean, these brilliant. people just coming along, helping you out, free of charge, yeah. <coughs> building your house for you. Helping, helping. Yeah. Helping. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes open. But, I mean, financially, it must be great for you. Oh, it is, yeah. It's, it's, it saves me a pound too. <coughs> yeah, apart from when I take them to the pub, and it costs me twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> the grey tiles that the planners specified are all on, but Martin decides to add a touch of colour. And future father-in-law Colin is ready with an architectural justification for the new improvised look. You've got to... Stay with the vernacular. So next door's Stay with what? the vernacular. <laughs> Technical word for it, make them all look the same. All right. Right, so you've got grey tiles next door. You've next got... door, number one is orange. So you've got orange and grey. They are all the same. Yeah. Fits in. After work, Rebecca comes down to check on progress and sees Martin's brilliant idea. I certainly wasn't expecting orange against black. Looks good. I don't, I don't know if I like it or not, to tell you. Honestly. Looks good. I suppose they'll grow on me. You've got the roof on? Yes, yeah. What Looking good. What a difference that makes when you come down the street, doesn't it? Finished. Look almost. Oh, almost. No windows yet, but almost. Are you quite happy with this roof? Um, well, a lot of it, yeah. Uh, especially my red ridge tiles. That's, that's, yeah, I like I, my red ridge tiles. I thought they were never going to be red. I thought they were oh, going to be grey. They were supposed to be, but oh, I prefer red. But the planners wanted grey, didn't they? They've got mostly grey. <laughs> Most of the roof's grey. What if the planner comes on and sees that? Oh, they might like it. They perhaps have his room do, roof done like this. <laughs> She's going to get in such trouble. No. Such trouble. When he sees it, he'll say, that really looks good. Really? They will, yeah. Now, you've had a few problems with this roof, haven't you? I mean, you've had to trim yeah, to, these yeah. end bits off here. Yeah. Because when you look along the line of the edge of the cut in there, it's not very straight, isn't it? Well, I can't see it from down there, can you? With the new roof now completed, the improvising continues inside. Retired electronics technician Colin takes a relaxed approach to the wiring. We're just playing it by ear. Do you fancy a light here? Yeah, OK, then so we just put one in. The old building's evolving. You know, forget the drawing. The drawing's gone out the window now. That's it. Oh, I fancy one here. No, I don't fancy that there and things like that. <laughs> It'll go. It'll go. Upstairs, Martin's first floor partitions are up. He's been moving things round as well. And you've made some changes up here, haven't you? Yeah, um, we've had a couple of changes with the corridor. Um, I had to, to move a few bits about uh, because I couldn't get any, the bath in the, in the um, bathroom. <laughs> you couldn't get the bath in? I couldn't get it in, now. Uh, it's, like it's like a big DIY job, isn't it? Well, just... nearly, yes. Uh, we're just liaising with the building legs and... and, and sort of go, going from there. Martin's been very careful with money in the build, but with only half of his £35,000 budget left, he's now worked out that he can only afford to get the shell of the building finished. This means that if he can't find more cash, they'd be left with a house with no toilets, sinks or radiators, to say nothing of chairs or beds. The trouble is, they're already at the very limit of their borrowing. I'm certain that um, I will be able to get the money from somewhere. Yeah, I've still got my balaclava to fall back on. <laughs> <laughs> I love I like his confidence because like, I've got no confidence whatsoever. No problem. <sighs> yeah. I think I'd have cracked up if he weren't so confident because the stress is just out of where we're going to find the money is just driving me up the wall. Martin and Rebecca go to their bank to beg for some more money. This is the only way they'll be able to finish their house. After a series of meetings, decision day comes in the middle of November. 
I've been off a site quite a lot just recently. Um, we, uh, meetings with bank managers and such like. He's going to phone me today. And if he says yes, I'll have a, a magic of mind appear in my bank account. If he says no, um, I'm in the oh, shit. After the phenomenal effort Martin has already put into the house, and with their entire future dependent on it, this is a crisis. Martin and Rebecca have everything to lose. We have put all our eggs in one basket. If this goes wrong, then we are destroyed, basically. We're not going to be... I'm going to be living at home for a very long time. Later in the afternoon, Martin gets the call he's been anxiously waiting for. Hello. It's bad news. The bank says no. Martin leaves to let Rebecca know. The next morning, I come up to meet with Martin. I was stressed a bit yesterday. I had, uh, I had no sleep last night whatsoever. So I was, I was in bits. I went, I went down the, the bank first thing this morning and played hell up, basically. I've, I've been with them 27 years and I, I didn't think it was fair play at all what they was doing, so I, I just went in and told them so. So yesterday you got a phone call saying no mortgage. Yeah. And after you've had a chat with them, what's the situation now? I've got a mortgage. I've got what I want. Martin's convinced the bank that the work he's done on the church has made it worth a lot more than what he paid for it. So they've agreed to raise his borrowing limit by £4,000. It still leaves them with a shoestring budget, but it is a lifeline. Just how stressful has it been for you? It has been stressful, and I have been to the point where I don't really want to carry on. But I know I've got to to get to the end. And that's the that's the stubbornness in me. I will go through with it. So when she comes to the pub on a Friday night, what's the topic of conversation? <laughs> the house. <laughs> oh, yeah. It must be a really interesting night out. It is. I'm really good company, aren't I? <laughs> fresh funds, Rebecca can finally start putting her stamp on their new home. She and Martin go shopping for their fixtures and fittings. I'm pretty excited, yeah. It's my first chance to do what I want. Um, um, I'm more nervous than anything than excitement, but the excitement's building with, the, with what's going on anyway. <laughs> This is Martin and Rebecca's first shopping trip together as homemakers. That doesn't inspire me. It doesn't do for the real what I've got in my head. It just doesn't do it for me. No. It's uninspiring. <laughs> Everyone has it. You don't understand the flow through. The ensuite is meant to be part of it. I know, and it don't flow through from that. By the end of the afternoon, They've agreed on nothing and walk away empty-handed. I thought this was going to be under her control. It, well, it is. Bex was going to decide what she wanted. That's right. And you were just going to take a little back step while she got on with it. That's right. From the start, he said I had full reign on the interior and everything I've chosen is hated. Yeah, I think you're getting a bit too close to it now, aren't you? You're dominating everything. But I've been here a long time. <laughs> ah, yeah, so it's a territory it's... thing. It is. Very yeah. much territory. Yeah. The battle is only <laughs> commencing. <laughs> yeah. I might have got there on the day, but I haven't won. Because eventually it will be what I want. Martin and Rebecca are now four weeks behind schedule. To help them make up for lost time, Martin has persuaded even more mates to help him out. But even with this additional help, there's a mountain of work to do in the three weeks they have left. The entire house needs plastering. The central heating system needs fitting. Three bathrooms need plumbing and tiling. The kitchen needs to be installed. The electrics have barely been started, and there still aren't even any windows. 
I mean, every, everybody says to me, everybody in the building chain that I know says to me that nobody ever makes a deadline, ever. But uh, I, I don't want to run over, I want to, do, I want to get mine done on time. By this stage, you'd have thought Martin's used up all the goodwill of all the people he knows. But I'm amazed that he still manages to get more people along to help for no money. This is community spirit at its best. It's very busy on site at the moment. I've, um, I've dragged everybody in uh, I know to try and meet them by deadline. It's like the blind leading the blind. Rebecca takes a week off work to paint all the rooms in the house. At last, she can get her hands dirty on site. I'm actually less stressed now than I was not doing anything. Now I'm actually doing something, I feel like I'm part of it, so I'm not so stressed. There is still the, the impending, are we going to be in? But I'm doing a little bit, it's maybe time. Her arm's dropping off. While Rebecca's painting, the porch roof is going on. The floors are being laid, the plumbing's being installed, Colin's on the electrics, and Crunch is on tea duty. It's only a week before Martin and Rebecca are due to move in. I've come to see how they're doing in their race against time. Hello, Colin. Colin, I thought these electrics were supposed to be finished by now. I know, people go in. I come in and they've gone and plastered the sunny wall. Then you're supposed to come in first and do the electrics before the plasterer. Hey, I'm retired, mate. I'm an old man. <laughs> I know, but it shouldn't take you There's six There's a few things happening back to front at the moment. Like what? Well, they, well we've even got... We haven't got no radiators at the moment, so we we're even um, doing the radiators after the plastering. Martin is pressing ahead regardless. He's determined that they'll make it into the house on the date he said they would. Are you going to be in by the 20th? No, maybe not in, but I'll definitely be in for the 23rd. Will you? Yeah, I will, yeah. Well, the 23rd is exactly seven days away. It is, yeah. So in seven days, you've got to finish your kitchen. Yeah, I'll be done tomorrow. Finish all your plastering. I'll be done tomorrow. You're going to tile it here? Tile in here, yeah. How long is it going to take? Half a day. So what, I get you the Monday lunchtime? Half a day for two bathrooms. So then you've got another three days on top of that. That's right. You haven't got any glass in the windows upstairs. Oh, we're going in on Monday. You haven't got your doors in on the ground floor down here. Oh, we're in on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot happening on Monday, yeah, mate. It certainly is. <laughs> well, if you get everything done the way that you just said you're going to do, which yeah. will be an absolute miracle, which, you know, miracles can happen around Christmas, you mm -hmm. never know, then you'd probably get your carpet down by the 23rd. 23rd. But I'd be gobsmacked. That's if Wednesday, didn't. is it? That's an expense day. Oh, that's too late. They booked in for Tuesday. Not a chance. It's all happening. It's a frantic rush. Too much to do, not enough hours to do it. Clive thrives on challenges. Many you Clive. Oh, that's what we live for. But after a mad week and just before Christmas, against all the odds, Martin and Rebecca spend their first night in their first home together. We made it. We made it. We just made the bed and climbed into it, really. Well, we're chuffed. We've, we've proved everybody wrong that said we wouldn't make it, so we're chuffed about it. Well, I'll give them that they've moved in, but it still looks like a building site, and there's quite a bit more work to do before their dream home is finished. Seven months ago, Martin and Rebecca started building their first home together, in the village where they both grew up. They're turning their backs on an unsettled life in the pub trade, to put down roots amongst family and friends.
Martin wasn't sure what his professional future would be, but his first job has been converting the church into a unique home. From this to this on a shoestring. It's February and I'm here to see the results of his hard work. Hi, George, how are you? Oh, all right, you good to see you. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. How's things? Fine. This looks great, doesn't it? It does. It's fantastic. Yeah. You must be chuffed a bit. Of a change. I can't believe it. You've completely proved me wrong. I was thinking he's not going to get this finished, he's not going to do it. And you have. I think yeah. it's brilliant. I do. I think it's absolutely fantastic. You must be really proud. Please just punch. The difference between here and the caravan is, oh, it's just immense. I put the caravan in here ten times. And you've got all your artwork on display on the wall? Finally, yeah. Years and years of artwork and it's finally out. <laughs> Martin, you must yeah. be pleased with this now. Oh, it's excellent. Huge amounts of space, nice big cookie. How much time are you spending in here? Most, Most of the of time. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting here more than we're sitting in the sitting room. <laughs> this is where everybody hangs out. It is. Yeah. Definitely. This is great up here. This space is fantastic. It's actually quite a clever use of space, this, isn't it? Yeah, you need space. For, I mean, I need light for doing the painting. Look, this is the new lifestyle. Yeah. It's about painting, it's about being in a beautiful space. So shall we go and have a look at the other rooms? Yeah. yeah. Is everything else all finished and done? It is. The family bathroom. Family bathroom. We've got a double bedroom here for the guests. Very big space. Another nice room. Nice room. Big, big bedroom, isn't it? This is a great size double room, actually. Wow. This is, good what, space. nearly half the size of the house up here, just it for is. your bedroom? Yes. That's what we always yeah. wanted. I'm gobsmacked. I'm absolutely gobsmacked compared to the way that you lived before. <laughs> this doesn't compare at all, really, does it? And then we've got the ensuite bathroom, which is yeah. bigger than which the is. rest. This is a full jacuzzi. I it cannot is. believe it. While project managing for the very first time, Martin has made an incredible job of this conversion. In just seven months, he's turned a disused 1970s church into a spacious home. So remind me what your original budget was on the house. Oh, I can't remember, George. £35,000. £35,000 it was, actually, yes. And what did you spend on the end? £39,000. So £4,000 over budget? Well, it's not over because I didn't budget for any furniture. And I've got all my furniture and I've only spent £39,000. So, I'm reasonably happy about that. So how important were friends and family to this build? Don't think we could have done it without them. No, I'd have been... I'd have still been on it now. Martin has got a lot to be thankful for. I've been really impressed by the sense of community on this build. <laughs> With so many people prepared to put their body and soul into helping set Martin and Rebecca on their way to a new and better life. I've enjoyed it. It's, it's been good fun. So, uh, it's weird when you're in there, when people looking around, they're going, oh, this is nice, that's nice, and you think, I've built that. <laughs> it's a complete new start for everybody, this. Um, I know, and I've got no worries about my daughter now. And what do you think you've learned from this? The next one will be easier. <laughs> what next one? <laughs> <laughs> what next one? We, we have con seriously considered the next one. Yeah. Seriously. What, for you to live in, or as a no, development? No, Keep this development. one. Keep this one. They basically do it for a living. Are you quite excited about the future? I am, yeah. yeah. Quite confident about the future. I'm happy. I like what I see. And I'm content. Martin and Rebecca have worked incredibly hard to create their first proper home. But this home is more than bricks and mortar. It's at the very heart of the new life they want to build, surrounded by family and friends, close to nature, and with time and space for themselves. 
it's the perfect place for the beginning of the rest of their lives. Next week, Peter and Andrea gamble everything on their dream of making a B&B &B in Cornwall. But as the project forces them to live apart, under increasing financial pressure, their relationship is severely tested.